Clear, former Secretary of State Lawrence Eagleburger went on the record about the war in Afghanistan and more. Afghanistan, what's your assessment? I hope you're not going to run all this at one time because I have to tell you, I'll have everybody so depressed they'll never come back again. Afghanistan, I think, it is beginning, it's more than beginning. I'm beginning, though, to feel a lot of the similarities with the earlier days of Vietnam. And I, I regret to say that, but we've gotten ourselves into the country, and now it's fairly clear we can't get out without some serious psychological problems in terms of how the rest of the world looks at us. It's clear now that the administration has, uh, the president has sort of all of a sudden said, hey, hold up a while, I want to take another look at this thing. After having first said, time and time again, said that this is the real war, this is what we ought to be fighting, now he's called a halt for the moment uh, in the face of a request from the general for another, what, 40,000 troops or something like that. In other words, a heavy, another heavy installment of troops and he says he can't win this thing without them. And that sounds again like Vietnam all over again. And as I say, they now, I think, have realized not only are we in there and we're going to be asked for more troops, but we can't get out because getting out requires uh, accepting the fact that the rest of the world is going to look at us and say, well, they were cowardly or they, for one reason or another, they wouldn't commit themselves as they should have, and the Americans shouldn't be taken seriously anymore. There are some psychological consequences to getting out that are going to be fairly painful. So I have to tell you, I'm, I think the president has no alternative at this stage but to put the troops in, or request them. But if he puts them in, and within six months or so thereafter we get another request for another 40,000 troops, I will tell you, we are back in Vietnam. It's exactly the way it went, and it scares me to pieces. Is this administration different, in your view, from the most recent Democratic administration's President Clinton's? Yes. I mean, you say that this one, you, yeah, yeah. you have, you're critical, this one is... I mean, in what, are, what way are they different? Well, in the first place, I think they're very different from the Clinton administration, for example. But they're different... I, I'm having a terrible time expressing it because the difference is so great. I, Clinton, was, Clinton was within the context of most American administrations from the end of the world, Second World War. Namely, that we knew where we were in the world, we knew what our role was, and we were going to, you know, we were going to do what we could to keep some peace and security in this world and to build structures to, to maintain it. Uh, this administration, it seems to me, has no more understanding of the trends of American foreign policy and our, and our position in the world and what we've gone through for over 40 years, well, a lot longer than that, <clears throat> but to, for the, to the end of this last century, to try to build a structure that would be, that could accommodate a peaceful world. I don't think they have the least understanding of what it is that's gone before us and what it is we need to keep in mind as we try to build structures for the future. This president has spent his time talking in public every chance he gets, and I, yet I see nothing that comes out of that talk that leads to anything concrete. And a classic example. There is no reason in the world that the fuss over the public or the, over the health bill ought to be anything like it has been and, and continues to be. Here the Democrats have such a control of the Congress, you would think they could pass this, any legislation they wanted within a fairly short period of time. Instead, it goes on forever. We still don't have any idea what the bill may be in the end. And the reason we don't is because they, when it comes to the right place to make some decisions, that is to in, make some, make it clear that the president has this and he wants it and it's going to be that way, it, 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 they disappear. But isn't this a Speaker of the House problem because it's, she's got to herd the cats more than the president? Uh, well, he hasn't even gotten to the president's, he's, he's sort of selling and promoting, but it hasn't even gotten to his desk and there is no bill. The House and the Senate, they're the ones who are 
creating the problem right now. Well, they, they, well they, there's no question they are the ones creating the problem. And as I say, with the control they have of the Congress, you would think they could do better than this. But it, at that sort of a point, it seems to me very clear that the president needs to step in and make some decisions and make some things clear. And if he has to call his people into the White House to tell them that he's had enough of this, and what it's, there's destruction to the, to the party, and that sort of thing, he should do it. But my point, again, is a different one. It is that this is, an, to me, an example of where they're not, they don't know what it is they're looking for. They don't know what it is they're trying to get. And this is true in foreign affairs, and it's certainly true in a lot of the domestic issues that we're now facing. And my point is, shut up until you've decided what it is you want. That my point again is, they are, he's out there making the speeches every 15 minutes, but the fact of the matter is there's no direction. And there's certainly no direction when it comes to the question of making decisions on what ought to be done. And it is that that concerns me most of all, that we have an administration that looks as if it's decisive, that talks nicely, but that is anything but decisive, is anything but one that is prepared to lead.